I was born in San Bernardino, California. There was so much violence. People get killed all the time. People are everywhere, laying on the floor, sleeping. It's in these slums, in these dark places. It's a dead city. My dad was in the streets. He was all into the, the, the gang stuff. And my mom was on drugs. When you get hooked on that type of stuff, that's it. That's all you know. That's all you do. She couldn't take care of us. She just didn't have the means. I didn't have anything. I was just so hungry that I would eat dirt. My dad said he found us and our pampers were full. We had not been changed in three or four days. My mom, I remember, she took me down to my grandmother's house. She had these smoky yellow eyes. And then I remember her giving us away. My little brother was just about six months. At four or five years old, I understood, oh, this life is raw. Life is hard. My grandma really put the, the structure around me. Watch your little brother. Be the protector. Be the strong one. Say yes, sir. No, ma'am. And she taught me everything I know. I call her my mother and my father. My foundation. She died when she was 53. And so my whole motivation was making grandma proud. My little brother went to Rialto. He was 12, 13 years old and joined a gang. Everyone there is in the gang. I'm not doing that. I'm not like that. I had to make a choice. I chose to stay in Fontana and wrestle. I joined the wrestling team and I started developing my character. I started learning that I can get people's attention. The choices for him was, do I follow the path that these guys are following or do I go a different direction? And he chose wrestling. He picks up things, he's very athletic, he's very natural, he learns on the fly. Gave him someone to direct who he is and the energy and that determination that he has. I met Bobby at A.B. Miller High School in Fontana. I think I was 14 at the time. We were on the same wrestling team together. He took me under his wing and taught me how to wrestle. He was on a very good path to go to state, which is, as everyone knows, a pretty high caliber of wrestling. His grandmother passed. They were trying to put him in the foster system. There was no one to take care of him after his grandmother died. So when I found out about it, I went home and asked my parents if he could come stay with us. I'm the captain of the wrestling team. They see that I'm going somewhere. They see that I'm a good kid and they want to help me. So he took me in. He spent a lot of time inspiring himself. And I think a lot of that drove him. And that inspired everyone around him. He could really do something. I could be something. I could be a state champion. I could be great. One day I'm drinking with some friends. We're all kind of hanging out. And one of my friends was like, there's a wrestling tournament tomorrow. It's a freestyle tournament where adults can go to freestyle. The wrestling match starts, and I'm doing things no one's ever seen. I'm jumping, I'm spinning over the guy's back and doing some flip weird twists. And they're like, what the? After the meet's over, I'm leaving, and some guys come up. Hey, 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 come here, come here. Bro, you should fight. I'm like, ah, uh, I don't know. Look at this card right here. He showed me a card, and on the card is the guy I beat up. And he's actually fighting for a belt. Maybe I could do it. I don't know boxing. I don't know anything about stand-up. I don't know anything about jujitsu. I'm just a wrestler. Two weeks in the training, we go to Mexico for my first fight. I had no experience at anything. I would just go out there and fight off a of pure heart. And then my fighting career started. Introducing Bobby King Free. I fight, I make money. I fight, I make money. I live off of it. I could actually be a fighter. At the time, every great fighter came through King of Cage mostly. It's global. Once you are King of the Cage champion, you're now solidified as a world champion. Fighting started giving him things, recognition. You know what I'm saying? You're not just a street kid. You're not just this foster kid. You're Bobby King Green. I put the work in with Strike Force. Green picking him off now. Green, too much power. Just brutal. The UFC decided to buy Strike Force, and they gave him an opportunity. Bobby King Green looking for his first victory as a member of the UFC. Here it is. 
This is a huge, huge moment for him. I had to fight a kid who's on an eight-fight win streak, Jacob Volkman. Bobby Green, he's fired up to make his long-awaited UFC debut. Whoa! I ended up winning the fight of the night against a guy that was supposed to smash me. And it's all over! No plating me. Got my contract. Welcome to the UFC, Bobby Green! He got in the UFC and, you know, he went on a win streak. Bobby Green proved that he belongs with the elite of the division. He was right there, top ten. Bobby King Green! I would always periodically go and see my little brother. I kept my relationship. As I got money, I could go and see my brother and give him money and help him with his bills and help him with his family. Even though he went to the gangbanging over here and I went to the wrestling over here, I still made sure I popped up. I kept trying to push him, push him, and push him away from it. When you're in a gang, there is no end to this. It's prison or death. And a new guy, he's a fan of mine. Hey, bro, you can come hang out with me tonight. I'm going to a fight show tonight. Come hang out. We're hanging out. I got a phone call. I pick up the phone. Hello? Your brother's been shot. He's going, on, he's going to the hospital. I'm an hour and something away. I'm speeding. I'm speeding. And the phone call rings again. He just gone. He's gone. And I'm still an hour away. I was supposed to bring him with me to the fight show, but he wanted to go fishing with my dad. They were out there getting ready to go fishing. Somebody came by, shot him up. But this is where everything went down, you know? Um, they were out here working on a car. My uncle was working on a car right here. Um, my, my dad was over here getting ready to go fishing, and all of a sudden somebody came around this block here, swing around, and it started shooting. Boom, 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 boom. You know, my little brother and all of them were right here. They weren't. They couldn't get out the way. Everybody started running and trying to jump this fence right here. So everybody's trying to jump the fence. He said, my, my uncle told me he saw everybody jump the fence, but my little brother. I couldn't get there fast enough, you know. I couldn't get there fast enough. I didn't get to see him close his eyes. I didn't get to tell him I love him or nothing, you know? It f***ed me up. I couldn't get there fast enough. After I lost my brother, the UFC gave me that Thompson fight. I'm in my hotel room crying the, the night before, just so confused and lost. Thompson fight was so emotionally important to me because I'm fighting the biggest fight of my career. Brother just passed away. All this turmoil that I was dealing with and the pressure was cooking me, breaking me. My coach was just like, you gotta do it for him. You gotta do it. Of course you need to mourn and so forth, but you could get caught up into that. He's a fighter. It was important, especially if you dedicate it to him, you wanna win. I didn't feel like I had the energy, but I was gonna do it anyway. And so, the most of all was putting the respect on my brother's name, and letting him live in this different light and honoring him. You know, Bobby Green has been through things that some people just cannot comprehend. Lost his little brother this spring. He's come out the other end of it very positive. All this hard work it finally came to this moment. Bobby Green, who has this crowd eaten out of his hand right now. And for Bobby Green, huge opportunity. Josh Thompson's a veteran. He's a, a, a huge name. Bobby Green is really getting better with every fight. And Josh came at him, but Bobby avoided all those. Oh, right hand by Green. I live by the Warriors code. Oh, nice flying knee. And that Warriors code is, when a fight happens, Nothing can stop you. The winner by split decision, Bobby King Green. For those who don't know, my brother was killed. Um, four family members shot all at once. And this is the only reason I, I actually took the fight, you know, is to give my brother that honor. Tragedy has made me and pushed me and molded me into this person that's indestructible where I just had to be strong in all senses. So when I'm in a fight, 
you're not gonna break me. Because life has tried to break me so many times. It's fight. He's freaking tough, and that's part of his upbringing. And he's able to bring that to anything he does. He has that instinctively built into him. A lot of scalps on his resume. Bobby Green's one of those guys. He's always ready for another win. Bobby could carry adversity. To be able to take a fight after you have a, a devastating thing like that, a family member dying, he's going to roll up on a ball and cry his heart out, and then he's going to get up, wash his face, and get back to work. When you're tested that way at a young age and consistently, you know, not just one time, you know, there's so many stories in Bobby's life that are heartbreaking, you know? And he's found a way to overcome all these things. Bobby Green is truly inspiring for so many people in this community, for so many kids that look like him and look up to him. I can control me, but I do it because it changes people's lives. It gives me the opportunity to help and to show people that you can be different, you know? You can be misunderstood, but at the end of the day, everything boils down to choices. You can go and change everything. Just all determines on you.